Police say the woman was sitting at a traffic light waiting for the signal to turn when a man came to the driver's side of the car and opened fire. An Amber Alert was just issued for this young boy. I want everyone to stop what they're doing and take a look at their screens. This is six year old Kingston Frazier. Take a look at this. We're standing right in front of this fishing boat. Now this fishing boat, we this is not on the beach. This is actually in a grass area across the street. Hundreds of Mississippians flock to this store in Delta, Louisiana to get their hands on these. A chance to play their lucky numbers in the lotto. Whether it's wine or hard liquor, before it hits the shelves at your local stores, it has to be processed here at the liquor distribution warehouse in Gladstadt. You can see just how much snow has fallen in the morning hours. I'm going to pick some up right here with my hand. Look how much this is, Brittany. You can just kind of get a glimpse. The front end of the car is completely smashed in. The volunteer fire chief tells me when they got here, the man was still inside and they had to pull him from the driver's seat of the car. Residents tell me that they were taken away in this large truck here from their apartment complex here in Flowood. Others tell me the water was so high that they had to be taken away in these boats from their homes. The second year Monster Jam is rolling through the metro area. It's a fun event for the entire family with eight drivers and eight trucks ripping up the pod. People in the area are looking to pick up the pieces after Hurricane Nate rips through the area. They tell me though it may take some time, they are still going to rebuild. Neighbors woke up to large trees overturned in their yards after strong winds swept through Pascagoula. On Beach Boulevard, lots of debris washed up from the storm surge. The surge was about what I expected. The winds were about what we expected. Now we've got a big mess to clean up. We're told the water rose at least eight feet on the beach. Concrete barriers lining Buffett Bridge now sit in the middle of the road. We have a lot of drainage issues and some power outages, and we've got to get busy on it. By 8 a.m., crews were out cleaning this mess on Market Street. But the damage was a bit different for some people living on River Road in Moss Point. Water and wind swept up debris to the neighbor's front yards, and some neighbors even tell me their boat piers were completely washed away. It's kind of like, you know, kicking you when you're down, but... uh. It's been bad and it's been good, but I guess it's over now. The family found their shrimp boat partially underwater Sunday morning. I live about 20 miles north of here, so but we keep our boat down here. So it was, it was stressful not knowing what was going on down here. The family was visibly emotional standing at the pier. They tell me the boat is the main part of their shrimp gathering business, and they're not sure if it can be fixed. It's devastating, but we'll get through it. I've had a boat sink. And so I know the feeling. When you live down here and you own a boat, you really like it. <laughs> so it's, it's almost like, you know, losing a friend. The boat docked right next to the families was also damaged, but the community says they are stepping in to help. We've been rebuilding down here for a long time. <laughs> we, uh, we go through hurricanes and we, we rebuild. We love living here because it's a beautiful place and we'll continue to live here and we'll just rebuild. Reporting in the Gulf Coast, Nate Holmes, WJTV 12. A historic landmark in Port Gibson has a new glow. WJTV's Nate Holmes takes us to the city where the popular statue is shining light to the people who live there. Wrapped in all its glory, the golden hand returns to Port Gibson. The statue was taken down from the top of First Presbyterian Church after losing its shine. The gilding was coming off. There was some rust on the cuff around the bottom of the hand. So um, we just realized that it needed some work. In 1903, the church's original statue made out of wood was replaced with this metal one. This is wonderful. This is an icon. This is almost the symbol of Port Gibson as well as First Presbyterian Church. As long as I've been uh, around and living, that thing I've been up there. The 10-foot, 200-pound statue was lifted 147 feet into the air by a crane and then anchored down to the steeple Tuesday morning. Not only does it point heavenward, but it also gives us a sense of peace. The message is relatively simple. It's not about us. It's about God. Now that the hand is restored, the people living in Port Gibson encourages everyone to come see it. When I'm visiting somewhere about Port Gibson, 
Just come by when they get old across the bridge, look at the thing. It's a symbol not only of our church, but of the whole town. I mean, when people think of Port Gibson, that's what they think about. And as you make your way into the city, you're guided by the golden hand. Nate Holmes, WJTV 12. It is something to see. The statue took six weeks to restore.